This is Pastor Maxwell Clark of Life Point Church, and we wanted to welcome you to another Five on Friday. Last week, we talked about five steps to grow spiritually, and the last point that I gave you guys was journaling. Throughout my time in ministry, I've gotten a lot of questions from people about how exactly do you journal? And I gotta tell you something, there is no specific science to it. All I can do is recommend some things that I have done that have actually changed my journaling life and actually made it more deep and profound and meaningful and powerful. So today I wanted to share five of those things with you. Number one is to get along. Honestly, that is the best advice that I can give you. Get alone. Tell everybody, get away from you. Go into a quiet room. I don't care if you have to go into a closet. If you got to go to Starbucks, put your headphones on, get in the zone, but get alone. There's nothing like getting alone with God and rustling with God. And uh, when we're journaling, we're doing just that. It gives you a chance to, to allow your thoughts to, to come to you, to, to wrap your mind around things, and to actually spend some time. Sometimes you get started journaling and you just get lost in the moment. So there's nothing better than getting alone. The number two thing that I would tell you to do is, is journal through a scripture reading. A lot of people believe that you have to journal and you're like writing a book about yourself. No, journaling can be made up of a lot of different things. Uh, one of the best things that I think a person can do is journal through the scriptures. When you're reading the scriptures and thoughts start coming to your mind, ideas start coming to your mind, start writing them down. Usually when I'm reading the scriptures, I keep a little notebook um, right next to me with a pen. And if something hits my mind, I'll write it down right there in the book. Sometimes I even write in my Bible and transfer it later. But taking your time and writing will allow you to get some of the things that, that come to your mind so quickly and leave down on paper. Sometimes some of the most profound things I, that people think, I think get lost. I think some of the greatest thoughts and greatest ideas the world has never actually seen because no one wrote them down. Number three is to make personal application. When you make personal application, what you're doing is actually saying, what is this saying to me about my life, about my condition and about where I'm at? See, one of the things we do sometimes is that we get started and we're studying and we're praying, but one of the things we do is we, we look at everybody else. How should this affect everybody else? But one of the best things you can do is say, what should happen to me because of what I've read or what I'm experiencing or what I'm going through? How is God interacting in my life? And so when we make personal application, we're doing just that. We're allowing God to speak to us. We're quieting ourselves. We're humbling ourselves. And there's nothing that can help a person grow more than doing that. The number four thing that I would tell you is this, be transparent. Your journal is for you. If you got a nosy sister, nosy brother, nosy mother, nosy father, nosy father, yes, I said that, then what you need to do is you need to actually take that thing and lock it up. But sometimes you need to be able to write some things and to communicate with God through writing that other people don't need to know. Uh, every struggle is not for everybody. And so when we're journaling, what we're doing is we're wrestling with some of the deep, intimate things that God is doing inside of us. And that's not everybody's business. So one of the things you want to be able to do is to, to have that journal hidden. Why? So you can be transparent. When you're transparent with God, let me tell you the truth. God already knows what you're going through. He knows every struggle. But what he wants from you is your ability to pour out your heart to him. It lets him know how much you love him and how much you trust him. So being transparent is the thing that you need to do. One thing that I've seen in a lot of people who are hurting is this, is that it's hard for them to be honest with other people. And even worse, it's hard for them to be honest with themselves. But nothing can get fixed if you're not willing to be honest with yourself. So be transparent. Keep it real. If you need to lock it up, lock it up. But don't shortchange your time with God because you're not willing to unveil things that he already knows. The number five thing that I'll tell you to do is to ask yourself questions. Sometimes you may not be a fluid writer, but here's what you can do. You can have a set of questions that you could have pre-done that you can say, hey, these are the questions I want to answer today because they're going to make me reveal things to myself. They're going to make me pour out information. They're going to make me uh, write down what's going on in my life. And that's an important thing. All you're trying to do when you're journaling is really trying to express yourself. I'm a talker. Some people like me are naturally talkers. I can talk to anybody. I can be walking down the street. But some of us, it's a lot harder for us to communicate what we're feeling, our emotions. And so what we're using this journaling time for is to do just that. 
And so what we wanna make sure that we're able to do is, is find whatever methods and tips that we can do that will allow us to open up just a little bit more. Next week, I'm actually gonna give you five questions that you can ask yourself that will impact your journaling life in a positive way. This is Pastor Maxwell Clark of LifePoint Church, and we wanted to thank you for coming out for another five on Friday. We'll see you next week. You can check us out on the web at www.lifepointcc.org. You can see all of our sermons here on YouTube, and check us out on Facebook at LifePoint Church Spring. Have a blessed day.